Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be taking a look at how to compare the maximum value of quadratic functions. We're going to be looking at a uh, quadratic function in different representations, four representations mainly, a tabular representation, a graphical representation, and then two algebraic representations, one in the vertex form and one in the standard uh, form of a quadratic, all right? So we're going to, um, if you take a look at what the question says, it says for the quadratic functions that are shown below, so we have f, g, h, and j, which statement is true? So we're going to be comparing the maximum of a pair of, of these functions with each other, all right? So um, in order for us to attack this question, what we're going to do first is we're going to find the maximum of each function independently. And then after doing that, we're going to go ahead and start comparing them using these options that are provided right here. All right. So let's start with the first one, f of x. So f of x is a quadratic function presented in tabular format. So what we can do is if we inspect the pattern of the output values, we can easily determine what the maximum value is. All right. So uh, if you take a look at this, um, table right here you notice you have negative four four five four negative four so from negative four to five what do you notice happening there you notice that the the graph is actually increasing all the way up to five so there's an increment happening here okay and then you notice the same set of numbers presenting themselves but in an inverted fashion. After it hits five, it starts to decrease. Decrease down back in exactly the same pattern. All right? So the graph ascends to five and then starts to descend. If we were to draw the graph, it's going to look something like this. You have a situation where the graph increases all the way up to that point. That point, uh, which is negative one five all right and then after that what does it start to do it starts to descend down okay so there goes our quadratic graph right there so we can clearly see that this point negative one five is our vertex okay it's called the vertex and based on the behavior of the graph we know that it's a maximum Oh, so let me erase that. All right, it's a maximum point. So, because uh, you increase to a maximum and decrease after that. So, this is the vertex right there. Vertex, uh, negative one, five. So, what's the maximum value of this function? It's the y value, right? The y coordinate tells you the maximum of this function. All right, so let's specify what that is. So, the maximum of f of um, x is 5. That's the highest output value for function f. All right, let's move on to the next one, function g, g of x. So g of x is another quadratic function presented in vertex form. Um, so if you take a look at it, let's first of all write down the uh, formula for the vertex form of a quadratic function. All right, it's g of x equals um, a, it could be plus or minus, but it is with a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. All right? So if a quadratic function is written in this format, the vertex can easily be determined by extracting the h and the k values. Okay? So the vertex is h comma k. All right? So one thing you want to know is that you have a negative value here. So that means it's going to be a sad parabolic situation. It's going to be sad. All right. So it's going to be opening down. It's going to ascend up to that HK value and then descend after that. All right. So don't forget if A is negative, it opens down. If it's positive, it opens up. All right. So in this particular problem, the vertex the peak, because it's a downward opening parabola, is 4. You take the opposite of the number next to x. 
in the parentheses four and then you take the other number on the outside five all right this is h h is four <clears throat> and k is five bam so the vertex tells us what the maximum value is so if the peak here is four comma five then we automatically know that for the function g of x the maximum maximum of g of x is 5 bam all right let's move on to function h function h is the easiest one okay what is illustrated is that when you're given the graph of a of a function a quadratic function that's the best representation or the easiest representation to determine what the maximum value is okay so if you take a look at this function one two three four okay it's now at opening so we have a peak situation right here so this is one four in this particular case the vertex is one comma four and we can see that this point right here this is the peak it's the maximum all right so the maximum value as we discussed earlier is the output value which is h of one in this case which is four all right so our maximum for maximum of the h of x function is four that's the highest output value all right Okay, last one, j of x, uh, you have a polynomial, a quadratic function in standard form. This one is the longest one to do. Uh, so you can, you can graph with your graphing calculator, but let's assume that you do not have a graphing calculator. want to do this old school. So to do that, we just need to find a, b, c, right? Um, so this right here is a, b is 1. And then C is 4. And then we're going to use the formula. The vertex is, for the x coordinates, you evaluate negative B over 2A. Okay? And then for the y coordinates, you evaluate um, F at the x coordinate of the vertex, negative B over 2A. Bam, bam, like that. All right? It's um, computationally intensive, but it is what it is. All right. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, we're going to break it down, find the x-coordinate first, since the y-coordinate is dependent on it. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a. Okay, so let's list it here so it's clear for everyone to see. a is negative 1 half, b is 1, and c is 4. Bam. All right, negative b over 2a is going to be negative b is 1 over 2a, 2 times negative 1 half. All right. So that's going to be uh, negative 1 over 2 times negative 1 half. Just divide these two out to get uh, negative 1. Negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. Bam. There you go. Now the y-coordinate of the vertex is going to be the function j evaluated at negative b over 2a. Right? Just plug in the x-coordinate into the function to get the output. All right? So it's going to be j evaluated at um, 1 j of 1 so we know what j is this is j right here so we just plug one into that business and we're good to go okay so j of 1 is going to be 1 half times 1 oh snap negative 1 half times 1 square plus 1 1 plus 4 all right, all we just did is we plugged in 1 into all the x values of the j function. Now we're going to use um, the order of operations, PEMDAS, to simplify this expression, okay? So we have an exponent here. 1 squared is just 1, so this would be negative 1 half plus 1 plus 4 is 5. So 5 minus 1 half is 4 and a half, okay? We can write it as mixed numbers. That's good. All right, so the maximum value of the last function, g of x, j of x is 4 and a half. All right, so now that we've found all four maximas, we're now going to go ahead and carry out our comparison. 
So number one, option one says the maximum of f of x is less than the maximum of j of x. So let's input our values and see if it's a true statement. Maximum of f of x is 5. Is 5 less than, question mark, is it less than the maximum of j of x, which is 4 and a half? Is 5 less than 4 and a half? Nope, so this is false. Option 1 is not the answer. Number two, the maximum of g of x, maximum of g of x is five. Is that less than the maximum of h of x? What is h of x? Four. Okay, maximum of h of x is four is right here. Yeah. Um, is this true or false? Is five less than four? It's false. It's not true. So we're looking for which statement is true. Okay, so take that out. Option three. Is the maximum of x, f of x equals the maximum of g of x? f of x, the maximum of f of x is 5. Oh, sorry, yeah, equal. Uh, is it equal to the maximum of g of x, which is also 5? Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. This is absolutely true. So this is our answer right here. Okay. Option number three. Okay. Option four, let's just do it. We know that that's not going to be the answer or else we have some problems but let's just verify okay the maximum of h of x uh, 4 is equal to the maximum of j of x what's j of x j of x maximum is four and a half okay is down here bam maximum of g of x one and a half is this a true statement no it's false right four is less than four and a half false bam so we know uh, for certainty that the answer to this question is option number three. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Don't forget to help support our channel by letting us know what you think about this video in the comment section or uh, making any requests or letting us know how your day is going. Tons of support resources can be found at mathgodserved.com. Do check it out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.